Lord, that will be relevant to our lives. Great God that you are, we ask that you would just have your way. In the matchless name of Jesus, the people of God who trust God, say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Catch yourself. Now, it's just for the fun of it, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to, just got to. Catch, yourself. catch yourself. Yes. yes. Last week, we entered a new sermon series called CV Problems. CV, short for a medical term, called cardiovascular. And we know that cardiovascular deals with matters of the heart. So last week, we talked about the topic, be cool. Your heart is in the right place. And so as I talk about CV problems, heart problems, I decided to do some research about the heart. I said, Lord, what are heart problems? What are the main causes or reasons, the purpose of heart problems? And so I looked up all of the heart problems, and it seemed that all of them were categorized as heart disease or linked to it. Sometimes the heart can be too big or the heart is not pumping blood fast enough or is pumping blood too fast. Um, but most of the causes uh, of death in America are due to heart disease. And this heart disease is, is created when we eat some of the wrong things. Uh, but not only that, we eat some of the wrong things and then we don't exercise. So, so our heart is taking on these, these loads. Uh, things in the food ends up clogging our arteries and, and clogging our veins and the blood is not able to, to, the heart is not able to push the blood to the areas of the body that it's supposed to. When this happens, when this blockage and, and these clogages, uh, these clots begin to create themselves, uh, we get to something called a myocardial infarction. Now touch your neighbor and say myocardial, myocardial. infarction. In other words, a heart attack. Now that's the medical term, myocardial infarction. I, the first thing I did for one of my science projects was to talk about the heart. And one of the things that I spoke about when I researched the heart, I think this was sixth grade, uh, was about myocardial infarctions. As I researched this past week, I had, had to hurry up because I had to fast Friday so I couldn't use the internet. And the little bit that I found out was that myocardial infarctions are when tissues or matters of the heart die. Now, it may not be the whole heart. That's why people who have heart attacks, they tend to continue to live. But just certain parts of the heart die. But all of these things are caused because of things like heart disease that causes blockages in the veins. So essentially, the flow that is supposed to naturally go with the heart doesn't happen because of the blockage because of the things that we sometimes do that we don't intend to stop our heart, but if we do it so long, it tends to block the flow. And when the flow stops, then the blood isn't able to go the way it's supposed to. And when the blood doesn't go the way it's supposed to, it causes certain areas in the heart to die. And then that's where we have heart attacks. And then after we have heart attacks, we know it ends fatally, in which people tend to die. One of the main reasons why people die in America, and mostly men, is heart disease. So we have these problems in the heart. And I said, Lord, we talked about last week, be cool, your heart is in the right place. But God says, let's, let's shift it a little bit. Let's, let's, let's flip the conversation. And instead of talking about our hearts being in the right place, let's talk about our hearts being in the wrong place. Um, so God placed this on my heart, and I said, Lord, I, I can't preach this. I mean, it's so boring. He said, look, preach what I say preach. He's preach what I say preach. So, so I came to this scripture, and I was just studying. I said, Lord, I, this is great, because sometimes many of the heart diseases, many of the heart problems, many of the, the health issues that we have all happen because we don't catch ourselves. We don't stop ourselves from doing certain uh, habits that end up becoming lifestyles that end up affecting our bodies. Instead of, my father gets me on all the time. I drink maybe three, four, five Pepsis, sometimes in a day. 
And he says, Biot, son, you need to drink some water. And it was to the point where he got so mad, he said, huh, give me that pop. He took it. <laughs> I'm sorry to put him on the spot. But he took the pop out of my hand and made me get some water uh, because I wasn't catching myself. And because I didn't catch myself, if I continue to do this over years, my kidneys can fail. Uh, uh, parts of my body can fail because I am not stopping things that can eventually keep be good at a point. But if you do it too much, it can end up killing you or causing things inside of you to die. Here we have an interesting story. A story where a man heart originally was good. David, uh, a man who's after God's own heart, didn't catch himself. David remains at home. Springtime, the Bible says that this is ordinarily when kings go out to battle. So why is it that David's at home when his army is out in battle? Sitting at home, uh, he sees a woman bathing. I mean, he's chilling on the couch, watching the bears, chilling. And all of a sudden, he sees baby Boop over there showering across the yard, across the courtyard, uh, showering. And so some stuff happened. Then David sent, uh, David inquires, requests, and then takes in that order. The first thing is he inquired, who is she? Who is this beautiful, gorgeous, dime piece sitting over here showering across the yard? Who is this woman? Then he finds out that this is Bathsheba, the wife of the Hittite Uriah, one of David's best soldiers. And so he says, okay, he requests her, tell her to come here. And so he requests for her to come. She comes into his presence, and then what does he do? He takes that what he wants, and he sleeps with her. Now, we don't know if she was promiscuous and, oh, King David, you know, and showing Cleveland. We don't know what was going on. But the issue is that King David, a man who's wrestled with God, a man who's who experienced with God, we know that he was uh, protecting sheep. And he encountered bears, he encountered lions, but he defeated them by the power of God. But then everybody, men, he's a kid, and men are falling at Goliath's hand, the Philistine. And all of a sudden, God uses David to kill a giant. And out of all of that, some kind of way, David stays at home. He is a warrior. He's a king. Normally, kings go out and battle but he decided to stay at home. So he inquired of who she was. He requested for her to come, and then he took that what she wanted. Many of us do the same thing. We say, who is uh, a sister girl over there? Uh Uh-huh, yeah, go ahead and give her a drink. You know, if we at Chili's or something, go ahead, tell her I'll pay a bill for her. And then you go over there and you go for the kid. I'm just talking about some player one-on-one. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Being honest, we got to be transparent. Um, But then instead of manning up to his slip up, David tries to cover up. David brought Uriah from battle. So now he didn't slept with this man's wife. And then he brought him from the war back home. This is a messy brother. He brought him back home in hope that he would sleep with his wife. He says, come on, how's the war? You know, just making some, some sad conversation. Yeah, how's the war? Yeah, it's good. All right, go, go with your wife. Yes, we just, I just wanted to get a report of how, how the war is going. And some kind of way, he tried to cover it up. And Uriah, because he was purposed, because he knew what his call was to fight in the battle, he slept at the entrance of the king's house. He refused to go to his home. So plan one, messed up. So then David gets Uriah drunk. And instead of going home to sleep with his wife, this is what David wants. He wants him to sleep with his wife so that he don't have to deal with the fact with the baby mama drama. But Uriah sleeps on his couch. Plan B messes up. Then Bathsheba, uh, then David says, okay, this is not working. David sent Uriah back to the battlefield. But this time, David sent him to an ambush set up by his own men and women. He set him up in a situation so that he would die. 
David had Joab place Uriah on the front line. Now, this is where all the action happens. Normally, even in America today, the, the soldiers that have lower test scores and stuff like that, I was told by some soldiers that they end up normally getting the lowest positions in the military. But those who have high test scores, those who supposedly have knowledge or experience, those people are held back because they can't risk losing the brain of the operation. And some kind of way, David said, you know what, no, put him on the front line. And so then Joab put him in a position, as the scripture says, in an area where he knew the enemy's best enemies, best warriors were at. And so then he went up and they tried to retreat. And then not only did Uriah die, but some of, some of the other soldiers of David died. Then Bathsheba heard her husband had died. She cried out to God in sorrow. Shortly thereafter, David made Bathsheba his wife. This is what happens when we do not catch ourselves. Understand that our circumstance may not be entirely the same way as David's, but many of us can relate to this passage of Scripture. Many of us can relate to this Scripture because sometimes when we don't guard ourselves, sometimes when we don't think before we speak, Sometimes when we jump into things before assessing the potential outcome, we slip up, just like David did. And so this message is here not to condemn us and make us feel bad about our past, but it is here to give us spiritual possession over our future. Now, it's up to you how you take what I say. But all I'm saying today is, that, is to inform us that we need to catch ourselves. That before we pick up that gun to retaliate for our slain loved one or friend, talking to the thugs in the room, we got to catch ourselves. Before we decide to drink and drive, we got to catch ourselves. Before we decide to eat excessively with no exercise, we have to catch ourselves. Before we try to tell our kids what to do, but we don't want to practice it ourselves, we got to catch ourselves. For God is calling us to catch ourselves. God is calling us to avoid trouble when we see it. God is calling us to open our eyes and to become aware and more cautious while living this Christian journey. For the enemy walks as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Today, God is calling us to catch ourselves because one piece of bread with your dinner turns up to the whole loaf of bread. One piece of chicken turns to a whole bucket of chicken. One drink turns to a fountain of drinks. One blunt turns into five blunts in rotation. One habit turns into a lifestyle. One thing leads to another thing. But if we learn to catch ourselves, then we'll get rid of some of those issues. So today's text helps us to catch ourselves. The first thing that this scripture helps us to understand about catching ourselves is that if we don't catch ourselves, we find ourselves being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Touch a neighbor and say, if you don't catch yourself, you'll be at the wrong place. David was supposed to be in battle. He was supposed to be fighting with his soldiers, but for some reason, he chilling on the couch. David is at home with his feet on the cocktail table, hands back and said, oh, I see you. And he saw Bathsheba and he went over for the kill. David went in for the kill. Why isn't David with his soldiers? Why isn't he with his army? These are questions that we ought to be considering when reading the scripture. David is a regimented leader. He's a king over one of the best armies in the world at that time. Why is it that he's at home and not in battle? And sometimes if we don't catch ourselves, we'll find our pla ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, how is it that David was at home and not be in the right place? Well, we know in Ecclesiastes 3, it informs us that in everything there is a season. There's a time and a place for everything. 
So in that time, it was supposed to be a time of war. But instead, David was at home, a time of peace. David was out of season. And many of us are just like David. We spend so much time in season that we should leave out of, but we try to stay comfortable in what we're at. David was supposed to go with his soldiers, but instead he stayed at home. And because he stayed at home, because he stayed in the wrong season, he ended up slipping up. We also learned that if we don't position ourselves in the right place, trouble will find you. Now, normally when we say you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, it's because we go to the trouble. You know, we go to the club. We, we know we weak. We know, I mean, I, I'm being honest. When I was in college, I deliberately did not go to parties because I know what I like. And the devil would always have her in front of me. So I had to make sure that I didn't put myself in harm's way, put myself in the situation, put myself in the place. But sometimes when we, when we don't catch ourselves, the trouble will come to you. It'll come to your very own couch, to your very own household, to your very own living room. And that is the relevant thing about the scripture. This, we preach all the time about us going to other places, but sometimes the trouble comes to us. The second thing is that we find ourselves doing things we wouldn't ordinarily do. David not only found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time, but David ended up doing something that he would never have done if he had caught himself. If David had operated in the will of God and gone out to fight the army like he's supposed to as a king, like other kings do, then he would not have even slept with Bathsheba. Not only will trouble find you, but trouble will trap you. Touch your neighbor and say, trouble will trap you. Now, I'm a, a lot of people may not like me for saying this, but one way for, and this is how I've, I've been told in high school, and this is what I've seen in high school, one way that some women trap men is through the babies. I've heard so many stories about how some women use that experience. We ain't gonna talk about it, but y'all know that experience to create a baby to trap the man. And we find it that this wasn't Bathsheba's in intention, but David, because he was out of season, because he was doing wrong, he not only slept with her, but the scripture says she had just got out of her period. Now. Y'all know about y'all menstrual cycles, right? If I, I don't re recall it, but I recall that when you're right out of the period, that's when you're the most fertile, when you're coming right out of your period and you cleanse yourself. Is that, is that not correct? It's kind of so, it's sort of in that field? The fact is, she was fertile. And so when you are in the wrong place, you don't go to no fertile woman. So David... When he was out of order, he ended up getting trapped because, he, I'm sorry, I'm just being real with you all. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. And many of us can relate to that, that sometimes when we step out of the will of God, we'll, it's like, God, why, why I mess up so easy? Because you were out of your place. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then not only that, you ended up doing something that you would have not ordinarily done. David brings Uriah back home. So not only did he sleep with her, but then he tries to cover it up. Many times in our lives, when we go through stuff and we do things that we shouldn't do, what we do, we try to cover it up. I remember a story, I can't remember where I heard this story from, but there was a, I don't know where I heard this story from. There was a vase in somebody's house, and uh, I guess they had some children in the house, and then one of the children knocked the vase down and broke it. Now, mama told so-and-so not to touch the vase. Don't touch my stuff. That's what mama said. Well, when mama went to the grocery store, the kids were at home, and they were playing, and what happened? They touched the vase. And not only did they touch it, but then the vase fell and broke. Now, when you see this, you think mama not going to pay attention when she get home. So what the, what the kids did was they, they swept the vase. They cleaned it up real good, cleaned it off the counter, everything was fine. But then when mama got home, she saw that her vase 
was not there. Sometimes when we try to cover up ourselves, we still get exposed. When we try to hide our issues, when we try to hide our wrong, we still end up getting caught. And so we find it that then when we, when we, uh, our, when we don't catch ourselves, we not only find ourselves at the wrong place at the wrong time, but we find ourselves doing things that we wouldn't ordinarily do. We find ourselves sleeping with people we shouldn't or doing things we shouldn't, just to be universal. We've, and then once we do that, we end up slipping up. Once we slip up, then we try to cover it up. And we find ourselves trying to, instead of confessing up, to just cover up. David not only tried to cover it up by having uh, the Uriah come home, then he got him drunk. I said, hey, hey, man, come on, come, come chill with your boy. Let's go on over to, uh, you know, go over to Arnie's right quick and just cheer right quick. I'm going to be honest with people who know Chicago, and we know where Arnie's is a bad place. So David said, come, come chill with me. And then they got drunk. And in hope still that Uriah would have, would lay with his wife, he still didn't. So now in all of this covering up, I think we can relate to this, it still don't work. Our plans to cover up our mess just don't work. I mean, we, it's just not enough planning. It just can't work. Then David did one of the worst things he could have ever done. He had it planned for Uriah to get killed. A king, the leader of Uriah. Uriah was faithful and devoted to the army, to Israel. And here it is, his king is here killing him. And we'll find it that when we mess up, sometimes we'll end up knocking people out of the will of God to cover our own mess up. We'll find ourselves being a stumbling block to somebody else because we did some stuff. Now, I don't know y'all that well. I ain't been here only a year. But I almost, I'm almost certain that each and every one of us has done something to be a stumbling block to somebody else. We didn't know it. Because we were, we were blind. Because we were trying to cover up. We, we're just so worried. And we end up being hindrances to other people. But the third thing is that after we find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time, after we find out that we uh, are doing things that we wouldn't ordinarily do, the third thing is that, that though we are forgiven, it's not forgotten. What are you saying, preacher? Uh, the, the scripture says that God was displeased with what David had did. Ordinarily, David should have died. But because God loved David, because of God's grace, because of God's love for us, some kind of way, God forgave him. But we get so tripped up because we think God just forgives us. Lord, we can do whatever we want. We know you're just going to forgive us. We know you're going to forgive. We can do what we want. But David, the Bible says that uh, the, the God said that your house will always have trouble from this day on. We find it that David's son slept with one of his, con his wives on the roof in front of all of Israel. Trouble in his house. His son raped his daughter, Tamar. I mean, he raped his half-sister. Trouble in the house. Bathsheba's firstborn died. Trouble in the house. Though we are forgiven, though God allowed him to stay the king, God still chastises those he loves. And when we don't catch ourselves, we ought to be expecting chastisement. We ought to be expecting God to show up in our lives and to show his grace, but to also let us know that I am the Lord thy God who created thee. So regardless of what you're doing, regardless of, of where you've been, know that whatever you've done, God has forgiven you, but you still have to answer to the Lord. And there might be somebody here today who hasn't caught themselves. You've been coming to church and You've been coming when stuff is going on, but you haven't caught yourself. You go to things and you participate in activities. I'm not trying to be your guy. I'm not trying to tell you what to and not to do. But I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Is that all right? And sometimes we do stuff that we shouldn't. But I'm challenging you to catch yourself today. 
to don't find yourself in an opportunity when we hear the trumpets and the, and the heaven cracks the sky and Jesus comes back. Don't find yourself without Jesus. I'm challenging you to catch yourself today. I'm challenging you to stand on your feet as we open the doors of the church right now that there might be somebody here who wants to catch themselves.